a massive aircraft order in the region of three digits, an airline acquiring a new aircraft, Qantas Airbus A380 news, and coverage over at Boeing. All that is in today's aviation news recap and the final one of the week, so make sure you're staying tuned. Beginning right off the bat with a new aircraft order. EasyJet, a major European low-cost carrier, has announced its intent to place a major deal with Airbus. The additional aircraft order is expected to be in the region of 157 planes in the A320neo family. EasyJet says the makeup of the deal is slated to be for 56 A320neos and 101 A321neos. Such a deal of mammoth scale increases their reliance on the family by bringing their aircraft on order to over 300. While needing approval by shareholders, EasyJet believes that the delivery slots will be equally important in the thinking behind this agreement. Airbus deliveries are not only delayed, but substantially backed up, which is evident through the A320neo family especially, this being their most popular aircraft type and most in demand by airlines right around the globe. As a result, many carriers can't really acquire the aircraft when maybe they'd precisely like to, as a means to be able to work around this, well, EasyJet says deliveries of these units will take place between 2029 and 2034. What this means is they can get in the door early, and they'll know that providing something doesn't drastically go wrong, they'll have the required planes to provide growth to their customers. A luxury, yes, because at the end of the day, they're a major airline, and not all customers will be able to do this, but it is something that if an airline can do, they will plan out as far as in advance as they believe they can. Acquiring these 157 additional Airbus planes has been done, as mentioned, to grow capacity. The jets arriving during this period mean that through flexible fleet planning, they'll be able to play the market if it continues on an upward trajectory by having more than enough cover. EasyJet has always had a substantial presence within Europe. However, recent years have prevented the airline from truly stamping its authority like it maybe once would have. However, with an increasingly brighter future, the airline has set its sights on chasing expansion and market share for the first time in many years as it looks to battle it out with other low-cost units in the same region. Its two main competitors, you could argue, are Ryanair and Wizz Air, which are equally ambitious and willing to grow too, as they order hundreds of new aircraft to try and compete. Over to a continued topic of new aircraft, well, Etihad Airways is looking to grow its fleet expansion efforts by taking delivery of another Boeing 787-10. This is the first 787-10 delivered to the airline since October 13th, 2020, marking precisely three years. From October 15th, or maybe you're watching this after that date, the newly delivered 787-10 will, or will have already, entered commercial service. While touching down on Friday, October 13th, the airline said that the new aircraft underwent critical checks by the engineering team before it could be finally approved. Such checks on newly delivered planes are a pretty typical practice. However, you would imagine that the process is more straightforward if the airline, say, already flies the 787-10 or the aircraft in question. Had this been their very first 787, well, then crew familiarization flights would need to occur, training and much more, and it might be a multi-month process rather than, say, just a couple of days. Etihad Airways heavily relies on the Boeing 787 for these long-haul operations, it flies both the 787-9 and also the 787-10 extensively, with many commitments that do need to be fulfilled too. It currently operates 30 787-9 Dreamliners, these average an age of 6.2 years. Meanwhile, the larger 787-10, well, it has 10 units as well to its name, these 10 units average an age of 3.9, making them much younger as you would expect. 
As part of efforts to repatriate Australians stranded in Israel, Qantas will send an Airbus A380 to assist. Securing additional assisted departure flights, the airline has scheduled two already announced operations from Tel Aviv to London. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner will operate these flights from Tel Aviv to London. London will really act as a crucial port for the Australian flag carrier to get citizens home. This is when the airline will send an A380 to London by offering a service from the United Kingdom towards Sydney with a stopover in Singapore. It'll essentially act as the feeder onwards back home. Qantas says that the A380 flight will land in Sydney on this coming Wednesday afternoon. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator Penny Wong, says the situation is highly challenging and ever-changing in Israel. As a result, many working pieces do need to be analysed under these circumstances to determine what can and what can't go ahead. Qantas does actually say that nearly a thousand crew members put their hands up to operate on these flights. This total is much larger than the 70 that the airline required. As Qantas does send these Boeing 787s towards Tel Aviv alongside an A380 to London for these specially operated services, they do say that customers on their regular network will be impacted, but the Australian airline is working towards limiting the overall impact where possible. On to the final story of the day, and that's Boeing announcing a partnership with NASA and United Airlines to test SAF benefits with air-to-air flights. As part of the collaborative efforts, a mission will be to measure how sustainable a aviation fuel affects contrails and non-carbon emissions. Researchers at all three companies will investigate how atmosphere warnings can be reduced through advanced fuels, engine designs, and other essential technologies on top of that. United Airlines will adorn a special livery on a 737-10 once delivered, but you'd argue more importantly actually certified as part of the collaborative effort. This will act as the second Eco Demonstrator Explorer for Boeing. During testing, this aircraft will fly with 100% sustainable aviation fuel alongside conventional jet fuel in a separate tank and also additional elements. This will be hugely pivotal to really understanding reactions and progress research for the trio as part of their efforts. While the 787-10 stole the show, NASA's DC-8 Airborne Science Lab will actually fly behind the commercial jet during this testing phase. And as part of the DC-8's role, well, emissions produced by the varying fuel types alongside ice particles from contrails will be measured. Boeing notes that its eco-demonstrator program has seen continued expansion across recent years. Boeing, NASA, and Alaska Airlines in 2021 focused on ground tests with sustainable aviation fuel, and 11 total planes have served as flying test beds for the Eco Demonstrator program since its launch in 2012. That is going to conclude not just today's Aviation News Recap, but also the Aviation News Recaps for this week. I do hope you enjoyed the content. As always, if you have any thoughts on any of the topics covered in today's coverage, you can drop them down below in the comments. Thanks a bunch for your support. Please do take care and be safe, and I'll see you next time.